That's our, that's our derivative of the Smart Money Index. The original Smart Money Index is a big longer term index. It's not a, it's not an index of uh, something on a one minute chart. It's a daily chart index, right? And, and you can see what the Smart Money Index is actually all about. The original Smart Money Index or Smart Money Flow Index. It's a technical analysis indicator demonstrating investor sentiment. The index was invented and popularized by Don Hayes, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the main idea is that the majority of traders Emotional traders, news-driven traders, overreact at the beginning of a trading day. You see that? So in other words, at the beginning of a trading day, we get the volatility expansion trades. And we get the volatility mean reversion trades. Volatility expansion Volatility mean reversion trades, yeah? And that happens at the beginning of the day. Because of the overnight news and because of the gaps, the idea of gap fills, the idea of volatility expansions and gap fills, everything overshoots at the beginning of the day, everything. It overshoots. <clears throat> so on that basis, we have traded the overshoot. We've made a lot of money already. We finished our day from the cash open. When we look at this, then we obviously understand that in the morning session, it's full of basically, what, what they're saying is dumb money. They're saying it's dumb money. That's what they're effectively referring to when they start going into the detail behind this narrative, is that the open is always full of dumb money. There's all, and when they say dumb money, they don't mean people who are stupid. What they mean is dumb money that, simply has to do what's getting told the, to them to do. In other words, stops, liquidities, and all that kind of stuff is kind of dumb because it's fixed, it's structural, it's, um, it's systematic, it's whatever it is. They've got to do the trade. It's not very clever. It's just what needs to be done. You might say, well, that's very clever. But you get the basic idea of what I'm trying to say, hopefully. So obviously, on that basis, you, you start to recognize the idea that the clever money comes in at the end of the day. Well, we've told you that many times. That's why we use the RGL predominantly at the end of the settlement phase, because this clever money is always that closing candle, that closing narrative. And that's how you end up with this idea of smart money and dumb money. OK, so I'll take another screenshot of Yahoo Finance. And uh, you'll see this narrative. And you'll get the basic idea of how this narrative fits in together with what we kind of teach in this classroom. And as I said, this is Yahoo Finance. This isn't something I've said. This is simply Yahoo Finance. And you can see if you just read through this about the Smart Money Index. Take a look and read it. Traders made it, the trades made at the beginning of the day are labeled the dumb money because they overshoot buys, they overplay longs, they overplay shorts, they try and gap fill, they get stops out. Most of the money in the morning session are stops, gaps, all the dumb stuff, right? Everybody that's dumb is getting traded in and out of these areas. Whereas any business placed at the end of the day is called the smart money. This has been known for decades. It's not new. It's been known for literally decades. We've been trading this, literally trading this since the, uh, since the 1940s. So we've been busy with this idea since the 1940s. And um, this isn't actually a slight against early day traders. Instead, the index tracks intraday price patterns based on investor emotions. It presumes that many traders who make their trades early on are reactive and impulsive. Well, they are because they're opening to a gap that they haven't been able to trade up to now, right? The last time they were able to trade was at 9 o'clock London time last night. So they're, they're impulsive. They're reacting to that gap. They're reacting to whether they've made a lot of money or lost a lot of money from the day before, right? It's the index, remember. It's not the actual futures contract. The future is the future of the index, remember. 
So this is the first chance they've got to really do business with volume as the cash open. So it's reactive to what's happened on the gaps. They take in the news from the overnight and let it influence their decisions in the morning when they are panicking. We take advantage of that panic and we launch attacks into these opening bells. In contrast, the smart money wait until the end of the trading day. When the, the volume is at its biggest, they wait until the end of the trading day because these guys are in for the swings. They've seen the whole day develop. Okay. They've got a whole day's worth of real money information in front of them, right? Whereas the smart money traders have got nothing in front of them. They, sorry, the dumb traders at the beginning of the day have literally got nothing in front of them except the cash open, except the cash close versus the cash open. So they haven't got that buy and sell level narrative. They haven't got that idea quite clear at this stage. And they're obviously going to be panicking. They're in trouble. They are potentially missing out on a huge opportunity or they're in a huge hole in terms of the stops. Panic, emotionally driven trade, focused on the beginning of the day. They spend the day monitoring the stock market. This is a smart money and make choices based on their evaluations. Following this line of logic, it would be smart to trade near the end of the day since that follows the direction of the flow of cash during the day. Do you all understand it now, guys? Do you all understand it? It's kind of very obvious, isn't it, when you think about it? It is what we teach. I remember a question years and years ago from Miguel, actually, if I remember correctly. And uh, Miguel, I think, if uh, I might, might not be Miguel, but Miguel had asked, why is it so interesting to look at the cash close instead of the cash open? I remember making this answer or giving this answer literally years ago to that very question, why the cash close and not necessarily the cash open? And it was this answer that the biggest, the biggest commercial trades are taking place at the cash close. And it's always been the case. They take a view of this, the, the market that's traded. They've got a lot of information to use ahead of the cash close, whereas the guys at the cash open are simply uh, trading with the huge gaps or uh, either in their favor or in, in the uh, against them. They're trading purely with emotion at the cash open, and that's why we get these volatility expansion and volatility contraction trades. And, um, and that's what we start recognizing, the mean reversions or the contractions, yeah. So... It just gives you a couple of pointers, gives you a few ideas. The same for oil. And how's our oil sell doing, by the way, guys? How is our oil sell doing? Are you all enjoying it still? Are you all still selling that 80 level? Are you all still busy doing business on this? Damn tootin right we are, because we just made ourselves another $700. We've just wiped out another bottom edge, guys. This time we have actually wiped out the bottom edge. And uh, we've just taken another bit of profit off that 10. And life does not get any better. Supply sell. Levels. Brilliance. Unbelievable. A level we already knew about. Four sell trades. One buy trade. And we have literally made a fortune. Okay, who, here's the question, guys. Who didn't get it? Who didn't get uh, at least one of these trades? If you're an oil trader, not, not if you're a bond trader or an equity trader or a forex trader, guys, but if you're an oil trader, who didn't get at least one of these four trades? And I want you to understand one single thing about this. And that is not about the trades themselves. The, the question is, why? Why didn't you get 
for example, in Logan's case, Logan got the volatility expansion by trade. Great, but why didn't you get the sales? What was, why, why didn't you get the brilliant sale opportunities? Because it was a great level, first of all, we had a previous high, which was perfect. We had a wholesale price, which was perfect. We had a huge drive higher on the crack spread, which told me to be selling massive amounts of short business, right? So we had an enormous drive here, which, which if we simply put it on our charts, we can all agree that the price should have been doing this, correct? It should have been doing the exact opposite to these higher prints. So why did you not get the sales? That's not for me to answer. That's for you to answer, isn't it? That's for you to work out why you didn't get the short trade on. Why was the short trade not part of your considerations here, considering there were four opportunities to get that short bit of business done? Four opportunities to get that short bit of business completed. So why were they not on your charts? Why were they not dealt? You knew that the 80 had the wholesale price. The dealer's level was at 80. We know that from the order flow. So we already had a dealer's level at 80s here. So we had that information. We had the dealer's level, of course, at 95 evens. We actually highlighted that just in an earlier uh, screenshot, didn't we? So if you look back, sorry, to the original uh, dealer's uh, levels, you can see that there were some dealer levels around about the 25s and the 95 evens. So we already had some information about where the trader levels were. Now, if we go into before the data release, you can see some of the uh, levels that we were looking at was down around about the 95 evens, predominantly 95 evens. Uh, so we had these dealer levels already marked on our charts. So we can understand that these are areas that we have as a dealer level, 95, 95, 10 area, as a dealer level. It's not just a dealer level. It's also a bullish order block, which we'd already talked about to you guys. We'd already highlighted to you guys that this was where the bullish order block was. So we have a target price. And if we can break that target, it opens the door to a very nice sellable move to the downside, doesn't it? It opens the door to this very nice top, uh, top to bottom trade right here. And that is exactly where you're thinking about this market going this afternoon, isn't it? That's exactly where we think the market's going to be going to. We think the 94.50s will be getting tested shortly. We think the 94 evens might be within sight of the sell opportunity. So it's a question that you've got to ask yourself, isn't it? It's a question you've got to then go back at. And, and Logan's been 100% honest with you. He said, look, I never got it. So what Logan needs to now do is simply go back to the charts and say, why was I not on the better trade, which was the volatility mean reversion trade? Why was I not trying to take advantage of the supply line that I knew about from the tweets, for example? We had this big supply line. We told you 94 target price. We told you possibly even 93 target price. So for me, the best trade would be to get the sell trade on, not even the buy trade. The best trade must have been to get the sell trade on the books at some stage from that volatility expansion and from that dealer order block at 9580s. And that's where the sell trade actually has came from. And if it keeps going the way it's going, I can't see any reason why we won't get 94 today. But we'll wait and see what happens. It can always change as the US session gets underway from the American uh, cash market open. But it's the way you've got to answer, ask these questions, isn't it? It's the way you've got to ask these questions. It sounds as if you're having a go at somebody. You're not. You're just asking people, why didn't you have that trade? What is it you're missing? What is it you're missing from your analysis? that you need to make sure you're aware of in the future going forward. And the only way you can do that is to have an honest look at your trading and say, why did I, why did I miss that opportunity?